hold up, wait a minute. Y'all thought I was finished? We are back. Episode 5. The last one was episode 5B. 5B. All right, what did I promise on the last one? The last one I promised you 5A would be a beginner. Now we've got 5B, intermediate. So we got ourselves an intermediate lifter here. Same idea as last time around. We are gonna look at some technique videos, identify some common errors that are being made, some things that our good friend over here, hey, what up, Courtney? Courtney Taylor is doing correct some things that she's doing wrong, and some things to work on. Some things that you might be doing in your own lifting without knowing, and until watching this video, you didn't even know what the fuck you were doing wrong. You thought you were doing it right. Well, guess what? It's wrong, and you should feel bad. And this is gonna make you better at lifting. Why? Because this is, title of this entire series is how to suck less, and that's what we're gonna do. All right. As always, we must start with some introduction, some information about our good friend Courtney Taylor here. So Courtney is falls in that intermediate category. Courtney Cat Daddy Taylor, by the way. I give people just random names. I feel like Courtney's gonna love Cat Daddy Taylor. That's a good one for her. Uh, Courtney has a background in bodybuilding. So she was a figure and bikini competitor most recently. So she, I mean, you can kind of just tell as she stands there setting up for a snatch that she has quite a bit of muscle mass. That muscle mass we have found out over the last uh, three months of working together is quite strong. So it do work, weight do move weight. So she's got that going for her. Um, what'd, you, what'd you squat today, Courtney? I think today Courtney sent me a video of her front squatting 145 for five. So like 15 pounds over body weight for five. No big deal. Started eight weeks ago with like a 165 front squat. So things are going dummy. So she's quite strong. And then I'm about 99% sure. She told me she had a background in gymnastics and cheer as well, which makes sense. She knows how to move her body pretty well through space. Um, the gymnastics is a big one that I find in weightlifting is that there's that like body to bar movement relationship that gymnasts have where they know how to move their body around a bar, which is very helpful. Um, in that third pull of both the snatch and the clean and jerk. That, that third pull seems to be what people struggle with the most. How do I move myself around the bar and actively continue to pull on that bar? Gymnasts, it just seems to click for them, which is nice, must be nice. Um, so Courtney has a best all-time snatch as of recording this video um, is actually 85, 75 is wrong. I should correct that, I don't wanna I don't want to swagger jack her. She's got 85 on the snatch. Uh, clean and jerk also just maxed out at 115. Limited by the jerk. She's got a little bit of shoulder weakness that we're working through, which isn't abnormal. Um, but I'm pretty sure she could clean somewhere around 130 to 135. So she can clean somewhere in that like 59 to 61 kilo range. Her snatch, she's probably around that 40 to 45 kilo range. A lot of intermediate and beginner women, they get stuck in that 40 to 45 kilo range. Um, so she's made it there already in three months. So three months of experience, like we talked about in the last video, technically she's an intermediate, even though she has less experience than Courtney Bowie, which we saw as our beginner on the first video. But that's only because Courtney has taken um, a full dive into CrossFit Olympic weightlifting style training. So she gets snatch, clean, or jerk, or a variation of those five times a week. So for 12 weeks, five times a week, that's 60 exposures compared to Courtney Bowie's 16 or 17 exposures. So significantly more, 4X the exposures, even in three months as opposed to four. But let's not waste any more time on our intro. Let's fully get into this lift right here. Let's move this bar out of the way. Again, we will do the same thing that we did on the last one. We're gonna play this thing at full speed. I'm gonna let you watch the video. You can kind of tell me what you think on it. Um, drop it in the comments. You know, the first time I saw Courtney Snatch, I thought, you know, that it looked very good. The contact point was solid. She used her arms well, yada, yada, yada. And then we'll kind of see where she actually landed when we slowed it down. So full speed. I have to say crunch actually does a decent job of having like bars for weightlifting. Like their bars spin nicely, the bumper plates are good, the platforms aren't falling apart. The crunch logo is like a little slippery, but other than that crunch, I, I, 
hate you, but I will applaud you a little bit. So I think this is a complex again. It's a snatch plus an overhead squat. Yeah, so snatch, a little bit of a reset of the feet and an overhead squat there. Cool, so you know, full speed, this is a good looking lift right here. You're not gonna be able to pick a lot out of this at full speed. I remember the first time I watched it, I was like, shit. This was in like two months in, maybe eight, nine weeks in to her lifting, and she sent me this video. Granted, it is a good bit under her one rep max, but I was like, damn, I was very impressed with how well she moved here. Let's do the same thing that we did for Courtney Bowie. Let's break it down by position. So Courtney T also uses a nice static start. I really, really, really like her static start. I think her start position is about as good as I've seen from a beginner slash intermediate. Um, We'll kind of fast forward it a little bit. She does the intermediate thing where you like grab the bar and reposition a million times before you go because you're thinking about stuff. What did Ryan tell me to do? Oh man, he told me to point my elbows out and do this with my knees and you know keep my back tight and all that. It's like, okay, just clear your mind. There's a time to think when you are Olympic weightlifting and it is before you touch the bar and it is watching the video after. When your hands are on the bar, your mind is clear and you're executing the movement. All right, so let's see right where she breaks the ground here. So she breaks the ground here. So we got our start position right here. Hip crease, you can kind of see it. The pants there, the blue pants kind of help on, the, on that like black-ish background. So you can see that crease of the hip right there is above the knee. The knees are pushed out. The elbows are nicely internally rotated, which is really good to see in this start position. You're not going to find a start position on an intermediate much better than this one right here. Let's see what happens as she starts to move. So we just go frame by, whoop. Just go frame by frame here. Shoulders and hips, shoulders and hips, shoulders and hips. Rising at the same rate, love to see that. Love to see that. What do the shins do? Shins move back off the ground, knees stay out, clearing room for the bar. At the kneecap, we are in a freaking phenomenal position. Elbows are staying out. There's no tension in the arms. Very good, loose with the arms. The bar is pretty close, not super close, but pretty close to the body. We could probably keep that bar a little bit closer, lower the strain on the back as you pull. But overall, this is solid right here. Can't hate on this first pull. Now we start to get a little bit wonky. So that bar remains way out in front here, which means that we are not using those lats to keep the bar close. Are we gonna correct it? Do we see a sweep into the hip? Right there. This is where, this is what's gonna, see if you can notice it. See if you watching are gonna notice what happens in these two frames. Right there. One, two, three. What's different between this and one, two, three. What do we notice? Now nah, that's really apparent. Then you can really fucking, then you can really see it. Here, all is gravy. The bar's out in front a little bit, but it's not, it's not too bad. Now we start to, time to use my mother fucking arms. <laughs> this is where Courtney becomes a bodybuilder and she's like, I know what to do from here. Upright row this bitch. So what do we see? Arms all the way through. No contact with the hip. She just, she's new to it. And she's a bodybuilder, like a strength athlete. And she just wants to use her arms. So we should remain through the legs here. Legs, 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 legs. Let that bar sweep all the way into the hip. Like this, if the heels were down and the bar was being swept into the hip right here, this would be just about as good of a power position as you could possibly have. So the argument can be made, maybe she needs to widen her grip a little bit. Maybe that's why she feels like she needs to bend her arms here. I personally think that she just wants to upright row it and shove that bitch overhead. And if we watch it at full speed, or if we just let it run, she does a great job of that. Like this is a phenomenal third pull right here. Like I am gonna put this bitch right where I want it. At no point does she lose contact or lose 
proprioception of where the bar is in space. She knows where this thing is at all times and she puts it exactly where she wants to. Very, very nice there. If we can combine that level of proficiency in the third pull with just being a little bit more patient here, keeping the heels down here, bar contact with the thigh, not with the thigh, the, the, the hip crease. If we can contact at the hip right here and then direct that bar straight up the body, unstoppable. I'm talking about going from, what is this, a 55 pound snatch, going from 55 to 100 with that small correction right there. But it's a small error and it has, you know, it's a, it's a five, 10% error off the hip. It has a lot of implications at the top. The implication of the top of the lift is that Courtney really, really, really has to stay super on it with her arms to position the bar. And the timing is a little bit weird. So her feet are contacting the ground here and look where the bar is. The bar is still way out in front of her, nowhere where it needs to be. Ideally, we wanna see the feet contact at the same time as the elbows lock out. That's not really how it happens. The feet are gonna contact just before the elbows lock out. So how many frames? Feet just hit the ground. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so about eight frames before she's actually in that legit overhead position there. But if we just run it from here, like this is solid. She rides it down, she's in control. You can tell by the face that she's making that she's really staying active with this. Good externally rotated position at the top of the shoulders. This is a strong overhead position right here. Elbows are locked out, bar is where it needs to be. She doesn't have the best ankle mobility, so she is gonna get more of an inclination of the torso, putting more strain on that upper back, which is you know something to work around, but I'm not sure that she's going to really ever have the best ankle mobility here. This might be the limit. I mean, could she throw on some squat shoes, some uh, heel elevated shoes to help out? Yeah, she probably could, but it's not the end of the world. Like this overall right here, is a really good bottom position for her. It's strong, she's not gonna lose this thing behind, she's not gonna lose it forward. Like this is something that you can work through right here. Like this is something that you can work on. I really like where she's at here. Now, some small errors as she goes to stand it up and you can see it in her shoulder. So bottom position, she's here, she's solid, externally rotated at the shoulder, really solid stacked stable position. As she goes to stand, look at her shoulder. It just rotates forward a little bit. She goes from full external into slight internal. And what's gonna happen here is that she starts to lose the bar forward a little bit. I tell all my athletes, you know, stay super active overhead. Don't forget the fact that there's a bar overhead that you need to keep pushing on and you know keep in mind. What happens is she stands up and we can see how far the bar has actually taken her forward. Both heels are about a half inch off the ground. And as she goes to recover, she has to take that step forward. Let's, you know, so we can run this, this overhead squat as well. You'll notice the same thing. She fixes it here. Great overhead position. Goes to recover, gets a little bit forward again. So let's kind of watch that again. Really good, stable stack position. Elbows are locked out. This is nice. Squatting straight down, torso is doing what it needs to do. And then at, yep, so you can see this. Wow, you can really see the bar on this one here. Watch this bar just creep forward. It just wants to take her forward. Just not being super active with it, not being super familiar with it, and not necessarily having the strongest upper back and shoulders. That's completely fine. These are, these are trainable attributes that come with time. Uh, really what we wanna look at is positions and proficiency. And like this bottom position here is really good. Like this is, and you guys can remember from episode one, like what did I talk about? Like can you get into the positions? That's a huge part of like, being good at this sport. So can she get into the positions? Absolutely. Is she strong in them? Yes. Does she need some practice and some more exposure to them to master them? Yeah, she gets that every single day when she goes to the gym. I can tell you that her snatches already look significantly better than this because we've been fine tuning over time. But you can kind of see as she stands up again, look at the heels. The heels are up again, just cause she's not. And the strongest toes. This side of the Mississippi, goddamn, she doesn't even take a step forward to catch this one. Doesn't even need it. How about her bar slam? There we go. That's what we like to see. 
All right, overall, a very, very good lift from Courtney. She sent me this and I said, damn girl, you're gonna be very, very good at weightlifting. And I stand by that statement. Let's take a look at the clean. Now again, throw her into the intermediate category. Why? Number of exposures to the lifts, but also she does the same thing wrong every time. She's sick of sending me snatch videos because every time she does, I say, where's that hip contact? And she says, I'm fucking trying. And I say, I know you are, but we're working towards it over time. So she does tend to make that same error every single time. When it's fixed, the payout is gonna be massive. All right, now we can take a look at her clean and jerk. A little bit of clean and jerk action from Miss Taylor. All right, again, same procedure. We are just gonna let this video run at full speed and then we'll slow it down from there. Enjoy. Hold up, wait a minute. Something ain't right here. I have watched this video because I've recorded this fucking four times now, a hundred times, and this girl in the background never gets old. Watch this. Walking along, fixing my shirt, realize I'm on video, oh shit, and I'm out. <laughs> girl in the back, what are you so embarrassed of? Don't be embarrassed, get in that video, do a little dance. Do a little dance. Courtney doesn't mind. <laughs> Love it. Um, all right. You know who should be really embarrassed is not you, girl. As soon as you move, this guy in the background, Salmon Tank Top. I'm going to get some full reps going. I always say I'm going to play it at full speed, and then I stop it to, like, make fun of people in the back. All right. I swear I'm going to play it. Ready? Go. I like this right here. Like the, you never know what they say, but it's always like, hands up, like, ah, oh, fuck, finally did it right, god damn. Um, all right, let's go back, let's start this thing from the jump, and we'll see what happens. All right, when we start, we'll let you get out of the frame. Oh, and uh, oh, and uh, oh, oh, oh. Oh, sorry, I can't help myself. All right, start position for Courtney on the clean and jerk is good. Good, very, very nice here. There's nothing that I would really correct about this. You know, chest is up. We got a nice arch in that back. Tell the back is tight. The hips are at a good position relative to the knee. Possibly widen the stance a little bit. Maybe slide your hands out. That's really the only thing that I would say. But again, I like to let my athletes kind of select what feels best for them. And if it becomes an issue, we then fix it from there. But the body, the mind, the individual, the athlete tend to be able to self-select pretty well what's going to work best for them. All right. Now, off the floor, we do see the hips rise a little bit. So the butt kind of shoots up a little bit. Not, I mean, it's not, it's, man, it's really nitpicky because everything else is pretty solid here. Um, but we can kind of see why that's an issue because she does lose her chest position a little bit. So like right here, let me see if I can get this here. Not a super powerful position to be in right here. I would like to see a little bit more knee bend, the hips down just a touch. And then we can kind of sweep the bar in and get a deeper knee bend. Like this is not a great rebend under the bar. Like we want to see a much more drastic rebend under the bar. Not overdo it, but more than this, so that we can really get that scoop. Kind of like what you'd see in like the dip and drive. You want to see something similar to what you would expect at the bottom of a dip for an athlete. So again. And we're struggling with that contact point. Does she graze her thighs here? Maybe. Um, but it doesn't really matter too much just because of what follows. So at the knee, hips are a little high. She fixes it because she's super strong. And then we are here at our power position. Again, not a great power position here just because the bar is out in front of her. It's not making thigh contact. Heels are already up, so we're losing some of that, that force into the ground. Um, shoulders are over the bar, which is solid. Um, she doesn't really, eh, she does a decent job here. So she does kind of throw her shoulders back. I think that's really the only thing that kind of saves this lift right here. This right here is, you know, it's a solid extension position. You know, it 
knees, hips, ankles look good. The bar's out in front of her, but it's kind of because it started out in front of her and never really kind of fixed itself there. Um, a lot of that is the result of, and you can kind of watch her arms here. All right, time to use my arms. Nope, she would still be using legs, 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 legs. And then we extend, now we use arms. But what she does a really good job of, just like in the snatch, is just being a monster. She extends nicely, uses her arms to bring that bar back in. And when she secures the bar, there's really no gap. Like, this is, I mean, you just don't really get much better than this right here. Like, there's no space there. Like, this is a perfect meeting of the bar. Perfect. It doesn't get better than that. We pull, we position ourselves under. There's just no space there. She's not gonna, it's like the complete opposite of getting crashed on. She meets the bar, she rides it down. Let's watch her feet. How do her feet do? Extend. They probably jump back a little bit, so I can tell her probably like slide her feet out, but again, I think it's more of a timing thing and like where her body is in space. Boom. Rides it up. Gets ready to jerk. Um, for an intermediate, I want to see you spend less time at the top here thinking about your jerk. Like, just fix your hands, take a breath, and go. Because as you get start to get heavier and heavier with these jerks, um, it doesn't feel good to stand here for five seconds with 105% of your max on your shoulders. All right, what do we want to see in the dip and drive? Same thing that we saw, or same thing that we wanted to see on Courtney B's video. We want to see the knees push out. We want to stay the heels down. We want to make sure that bar does not drift forward. We don't want to over dip. And when we go back to drive, we don't want to see any forward lean of the torso or the weight dragging the individual forward. Do we see that? Eh. I don't hate it. I don't love it. But I don't hate it. This is kind of one issue that I see with a lot. So watch the hips and the knees right here. If we go frame by frame. Look at that. How does she initiate her jerk? The jerk is what? It's knees. We want to bend at the knees. It's knee flexion and extension. It's not a lot. Not a ton of hips here. So what do we see? Is immediately sticks her hips back. So very little knee angle change right here just pushes her hips back and watch where the bar goes. The bar goes forward. So it starts forward and I promise you, it's hard to stop it once it starts going. She probably dips a little bit too low, you know, push those knees out and stop your dip around right here. But we get one, two, three, four, five, five more frames of dip. A little bit too far forward and like just zoom in on the heels here and you'll be able to tell which direction this bar is gonna go. And this is again, Courtney's very sick of hearing me talk about like hip contact on the snatch. She's also very, very sick of me telling her to keep her heels down on, um, on her jerks. So she goes from dip, goes to drive the bar, extends the knees very nicely. Her timing is good. Um, again, like, like with Courtney Bowie, we do want to see that back foot make contact first, but what happens here is she doesn't really complete her extension with that front foot. She's immediately thinking about like just getting it out in front of her as fast as possible. Keep driving up through the bar. Keep driving, keep driving, keep driving for one more frame. Right leg does a great job, which is why it lands last. I want to see that one land first. And again, just like Courtney Bowie. This right here, pretty good in terms of like where her feet land. It's not bad. There's some bend in that back leg. Toe angle is good. She's not tight roping it. She's got plenty of distance there. Very good. But if you look at the bar overhead, it is definitely out in front of her. Like it is in front of her forehead, it looks like. And what you're going to notice is that she's going to have to do the same thing as Courtney B in that she's going to have to put that bar back behind her. So watch where it lands, where she wanted it. Yeah. She also does a little bit of delayed like head through. Like I would like to see and get your head through right there. That'll kind of set that bar back in a better position. 
that front shin angle is too far forward. It's just an indication that she's got too much of her weight forward. The dip was forward, the drive was forward, the bar went forward. Her body had no choice but to do the exact same thing. And because she's got so much of her weight on that front foot, she has to recover back foot and then front foot. Ideally, we want to see this front shin angle vertical, 50-50 weight distribution, 60-40, depending on who you're talking about, the 60-40 being in favor of the front foot. Um, a lot of coaches are saying 50-50 now. I don't really think it makes much of a difference. Um, but we do want to see a recovery that is front foot halfway back, back foot meets it. But because she's got so much of her weight on her front foot, her only choice is here to bring her back foot forward first. What happens when you bring that back foot forward as well is you tend to arch your lower back to support the weight. And that's a nasty combo of shearing and compressive forces. One thing that Courtney always does a really good job of is bar slam. Nice. Drop that bar, girl. Uh, don't. Drop that bar, Bill. Oh, there we go. Get a little. Okay, that was fine. I like it. A little smile there at the end. Oh, I think she was talking to our friend here. Hey, thanks for getting out of my video. Or like, oh, it's fine. You can be in my video. We're not making a movie. We're at the gym. People are trying to work out. I don't mind. That's probably what Courtney said. Because she's a reasonable person. A very nice person. All right. Those were our intermediate lifts there featuring Courtney Taylor. So same mistakes pretty much every time she does the lifts. It's just a matter of drilling that over and over. So Courtney, what do I always say? Make hip contact on the snatch. Let's see some thigh contact on those cleans. Keep the heels down longer in all of those lifts and watch them fly. She's doing the same thing wrong every time. It's frustrating, but when you get it right, boy, howdy do things really fly um, a lot of you who are watching this video are probably beginner or intermediate so you can probably take a lot from those videos right there try some of those things out the tips the tricks let us know down in the comments below if it has helped you out at all if you're setting huge prs you know who to tag on Instagram. You know who to let know that you're hitting those big PRs. Um, up next, our 5C video is our advanced lifter, Evan Smith. Uh, we will catch you on that next one in the meantime. And as always, stay gifted, folks.